excited to ride that. I'm thrilled. This is the Milwaukee streetcar thing. AKA the hop. The hop. It's been built just a few short years ago. How long is the route? Uh, I'll put it on screen. It's actually like long. kind of a useful route. It's linear, unlike a loop. It's a bus on tracks and a pantograph, apparently. I mean, we're yeah, it's free. Yeah, it's fr I know that's good. It's free. They're building an extension that opens literally next week. But unfortunately, <laughs> we'll this have is to when like my fall break was. So yeah, this is when we're here. We'll have to look out and see if we can spot it. It's like three stops. It's a. It's like a another very meager extension. Actually, it's very weird. It's another. It's going to be another line, which and it's separate. It doesn't require a transfer. Yeah. Oh dear. Already, so the, the, this runs every 20 minutes on weekends, every 15 on weekdays, which is really not great for this type of downtown streetcar thing. Anyway, we're walking to the, the first stop the right now. The streetcars are reminiscent of the very ill-fated Atlanta streetcar. <laughs> yes, which I have the unofficial record for the fastest time <laughs> riding, because no one else has done it. So we've discovered that the 30 is exactly the same route <laughs> as the streetcar, yet it runs every 14 minutes and the, the trolley's every 20. And it's probably, I mean, it's probably more frequent on, on weekdays. There's a Sunday. And it looks like people are just waiting at the bus stops rather than bothering with the light rail. Because the bus actually goes way further so on both ends. It's a total waste of money. <laughs> and just a vanity project, essentially, to have yeah. this light rail here. We've the reached. The station is amazing. You can see the lake. Yeah, can you see that down there? Here it's in awesome. The beautiful park. It's a really nice spot for the station to be. And I mean, all of this housing was probably built because it's close to the streetcar, like the, in the anticipation of the streetcar coming. So like, I don't want to chide it for not being good for development, because it is, but... It's just not very practical. And the station, I mean, they have leany leans. There's no actual, there's one bench in the shelter that's tiny, and then the rest is leany leans. I'll give it credit that it's linear. Like, if you were trying to go from here to the Amtrak station, like, it's pretty that's helpful. But the it's 30 free. will also do that more frequently and probably yeah. faster. Like you have to pay the for it. The 30 probably but... won't go at 10 miles an hour the whole way too. <laughs> exactly. These modern streetcars tend to have real-time information that tells you when the next trolley's coming. I guess this one doesn't have that. I'm a fan though of these single track stub tracks because it sort of encourages the train to leave faster because nothing can really happen until they turn around. <laughs> That's true. So it sort of creates a sense of urgency to actually get the train out of the first stop. It's hard not to look at this extension and wonder why they're building it because these this pair of stops is so close to the existing pair. It's really just this lakefront stop. And and they'll probably run it every 20 minutes on this, with one streetcar in this little loop. When you could walk it in 10 probably. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing with these, it's like, you've got to run them at least every 10, if not more, because they're so you short. You just walk the distance. Okay, well, it's it's slowly coming in. Slowly across the switch. This is streetcar number four. It sounds very bumpy, doesn't it? It's not dotted. I guess that's good. It's sponsored by the the Poa But they could have easily done that with dots. <laughs> yeah. So props to them for that. It's just a, the most standard streetcar. It's very nice. Yeah. Oh, it's built by Brookville. Isn't that the company oh. that built the tri-rail locomotives? I'm not sure. Because <laughs> I think they're the only locomotives that were built by Brookville. These seats are pretty comfortable, actually. They're like plush. Welcome aboard to Canada. That is there supposed to be more, do you think? This is one of those butt massage street cars. <laughs> Oh. No real time here either. Doesn't no. Like there are some people waiting though. It's not totally empty. I thought these stop request buttons were extraneous, but they just did an announcement saying that the street cars don't stop at all stops, which it's is actually nice. I don't really know if it helps speeds that much, but it's something. It also seems like the whole thing is funded by this casino. Yeah, the everything says it's presented by Poto Watomi Casino, but it's located. Don't worry, buy it. It's located beyond the end of the streetcar line. So you can't actually take the streetcar to get there. You'd be better off on the 30. The ride is pretty good though. I know, it's good, and we're getting people at each stop. I'm more impressed than I was when I first 
This is Ogden Jackson westbound. Please watch your step while boarding or exiting the streetcar. This is when we randomly run on battery power for no clear reason. Yeah, because it's very trendy to do that. These modern streetcars will always just have a bit where it's battery powered for some reason. Of course, it uses that same sound that every one of these uses. Oh my god, that's a stop request sound. Someone hit the stop request and just that was that really brutal beeping sound. Yeah. It's really on these turns that you get the butt massages. We just put the pan back up. Which is interesting. I was wondering why we stopped because there was no one getting on or off. But I guess it was just put the, the panograph back up. Alright, we're on a straightaway. We're like, there's no traffic. This is the max speed of this system. So, this is the wrong time to say this. We go under a highway. But Milwaukee does seem like a really cool city. Like, it's definitely good that they have this resource. Although the 30 is probably better for this purpose. This is a cool view. This is cool that we're going over a bridge in the streetcar. Yeah. Some cool apartments over there. Oh, it looks like it's another single track stub in now we're waiting for light. Oh, okay. I don't think this has signal priority, does it? I feel like we've hit a lot of red lights. I would be surprised if it did. So where's the Amtrak station from here? Behind us. Oh, okay. Oh. So I thought this was like deviating the serve the station, but actually it's deviating away from the station, which is there. But it's still nice that it goes to the station. I give it credit for that. Do we want to go further and see here. the maintenance facility? I think so. This is very Atlanta streetcar. Just very putting it under the highway. Facility, under oh. The highway. They at least have like an inside. That's so where the trains go to sleep at night, and they have to come off the wire. They get very tired of rubbing against the wire all day. They have to bring down the pantograph and go and take their rest in there. Alright, well... It was honestly better than I expected. It was better than its first impression. Yeah. I, I think it's one of the better modern streetcars. Because it does actually go places. Not particularly quickly. I mean, it has a totally inexplicable battery-powered section that takes time to convert between the power sources. Right. And it's super slow, it's really rumbly around curves, but... And it has to stop at a lot of lights. But it's also free, and it seems to get people. It doesn't go to the casinos, plaster all over it. And, very importantly, Miles, it does not have dots on the windows. Yeah, if it, it had... this sponsorship thing on the roof. Right. That's actually very tasteful. What would you do if this streetcar had dots? I'd punch it. usefulness of a modern streetcar in America is that it gets you from point A to point B, right? Anyway, it's dark and it's late, so I'm going to bed.